Hi, I'm Abby. And I'm Jason. And we are RVMiles.com, the RV Miles podcast, and also our wandering family. And this is our story to becoming a wandering family. So we have been putting together a series of videos on going full-time, becoming a full-time RVer for anybody that's interested right now. And this is the second in that series. And we decided for one of these early videos, it would be great to tell our story about how we became full-timers, whether we're liking it, whether we're not, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so we travel full-time with our three boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry. They are... 12, 9, and 6. We've only recorded that portion three times wow. now because Abby's gotten it wrong. <laughs> you know what? It's been a long day, and sometimes they feel a different age than what they are. So, <laughs> so we, we, uh, we came from Chicago, where we lived for about 15 years. And uh, we both went to Chicago to go to school. Yeah, that 15 years includes us moving there to go to college. So. And and that's where we met. We didn't start dating then, but we uh, we started dating later. But we spent m the majority of our adult lives in Chicago. And I was working two full-time jobs plus some freelance work and making what most people would consider a good amount of money. But it was, it was still difficult to make ends meet. And I wasn't seeing my family at all. Yeah, it was requiring him to work two full-time jobs in order to make a living that would keep us all safe and provided for. And at that time, we should say, we should back up and say we have been on the road for almost four years. And so at that time, we had very young ones at home. And we were in a position where we were renters on the north side of Chicago. We weren't too far from Wrigley Field. And our landlord said, hey, we're going to raise your rent about three to four hundred dollars. And we just thought, wow, that that's really astronomical for an apartment that didn't have any bells and whistles. We didn't even have a dishwasher in the kitchen. We didn't have in unit laundry. We were, you know, I was taking all our laundry to the laundromat. Like, so it was a beautiful brownstone, but it made no sense for us to increase the amount of rent. It made no sense for us to buy because what we could afford was just going to be a two bedroom, two bath condo. So we were going to downsize. So we had all of these things kind of working against us when it came to living in an urban environment like Chicago. And that kind of got us thinking, but then also as luck would have it, I guess, if you want to call it luck, we had kind of moved into starting our own business. One of my, one of my jobs was I was a full-time uh, professor at a university and that was a five-year contract and it was ending. Um, so I was losing that job anyway. So we had started our own uh, website that we were both in the theater industry. So we started a website that was an industry news publication for the Chicago theater industry. So that was something that we could do from anywhere. And anywhere. we were starting to realize that we could do a lot of traveling. We weren't initially planning on going full time, but we thought we could just go wherever we want to go Absolutely. whenever. We had already been homeschooling our, our kids mm -hmm. because Chicago public schools were difficult for our oldest child and our, our other two weren't school age yet. And also, I should say, you know, I was staying home with the kids. So, you know, I have a degree in musical theater uh, from the performance side. And then Jason has a degree as uh, in production management and lighting design. And so when we started our family, uh, we both were still very actively working. I was still working as an actor. I was doing a little directing and he was also actively working. But it became really obvious around the time that our second child was born that I, as an actor, couldn't make the kind of money he was able to make on the design production and education front. And so I transitioned to becoming a stay at home parent and that's why he took up these two full jobs. And so now we have down to sort of one full time job and a business we're starting. I'm already at home with the kids. The kids are already homeschooling. So we had all these puzzle pieces in place. Now we were just missing kind of the way we wanted to do this, we had looked at rigs. We had been to the Chicago RV show, which is a fantastic RV show. And we had toured a whole bunch of rigs that we liked, but boy, 
were they expensive for what we were what we desired. And at the time, we, we really wanted a motorhome. We weren't looking at trailers at the time, which was probably a mistake that we made early on. We, but, I think it's because we had that van and we had a minivan at the time yeah. and we had just purchased that. It felt really overwhelming to move out of that loan, try and get a loan for a truck, and then also do what we needed to do to get the trailer. So we were looking at motorhomes, but we were realizing that there weren't a lot of options for families uh, of five. Even in the trailer world, we were certainly looking for used at that time. Yeah, because uh, this was 2015, late yeah. 2015, early 2016. Even so. at that time, there weren't a ton of options for families of our size that didn't need to like convert a dinette for, for sleeping. We wanted our kids to have their own sleeping yeah. space and all that sort of stuff. So we got looking at school bus conversion videos. You and I got looking, looking at school, at school bus thought, conversion videos. Let's be honest. <laughs> I had, you know, because I had this background um, where I built sets and uh, done lighting design and electricity, I I felt confident that I could uh, build us a, a motorhome out of a school bus, as a lot of people do, um, because you can get school buses very, very cheaply because most school districts retire them after so many years. That was not something we were both on board with. He comes to me one night after we've got our kids in bed and we're gonna do the thing we do, which is we put the kids to bed and then we hang out on the couch and we watch some you know, travel videos on YouTube. And he says to me, what do you think about converting a school bus into an RV? And without missing a beat, I say, no, there's no way. Yeah. Like at that time, you know, we had a two-year-old as our youngest, like the idea of building something just sounded crazy to me. And so and the, I said, no. We kept, and then I kept just watching those videos. I kept, we would be going <laughs> they, to bed and I would be, she would be subconsciously getting it in her brain while we were, just, while she was sleeping on the couch next to me. Yeah, and, they and just kept showing up. Eventually she just said, okay, let's buy one. And like the next, two I thought, weeks later, I thought I she was kind of joking. And like the next day she was like, so we're going to do this or what? When are you going to, are you looking for them or not? <laughs> well, we were on a timeline. So we decided this about late January, early February of 2016. And our lease was up at the end of August. So we had a very small window. If we were going to convert something into a home, we had a small, small window to do it. On top of the fact that you were still working, we were building a business and we were raising three small children. And so... You know, I was like, if we're going to do this, let's roll this ball. So within two weeks, we had bought this school bus in Ohio. We all loaded into the minivan. We drove to Ohio. We bought the bus. We drove the bus back to Chicago. On the way back, Abby <laughs> is calling around. She's, she, I'm driving the bus. I'm my first time driving anything that big. <laughs> and uh, she's driving the minivan back. But she's also calling places, trying to figure out, where we can store this thing not and while work I'm on driving. it and build it. Not while I'm driving. I and had done the bulk of the work. Before, on the way down there. Before, yeah. yes, but on the way down there. We found a place right across the border in Indiana and he was going to rent it to us for just a hundred bucks a month. He was going to let us build there. And the only caveat was that there was no way for us to hook up electricity. So we were going to have to do all of this with a generator and then with battery powered tools. So we drive it there. We get there late. We drop it off and we drive back to Chicago. It's about an hour drive back to our apartment. And this is what we did for six months. This yeah. is how we converted our bus. We completely gutted it ourselves. We built the entire interior exactly the way we wanted it to be with a few modifications because it can't be exactly the way you want it to be. And that's how we ended up becoming a full-time RV family. We started off as a bus life family. Uh, we moved into Wander Bus. That's what we named our home uh, or Bussy for short. We had many trials and tribulations with that bus over the years that we owned it. And now we're in a trailer and you can look at another video uh, that we have what, talking about buying our new trailer and why we sold the bus. Yeah. So to, we to get that story, but we have a playlist actually that's uh, here on the channel. That's our wandering family. And that's sort of our travel journal. And that playlist has 
our bus purchase. It has our video of saying goodbye to the busy as well, which was a very emotional and difficult decision for our family to make. This was a home we had built with our own hands. We had lived in it for three years. Um, but it had become clear that she was just no longer able to do the kind of traveling that we wanted to do. By the time we had purchased this uh, travel trailer, we had built up our business. We had built up the RV Miles podcast, as Jason is wearing today. We had built up RV Miles Network. And so uh, we're very, very busy now out on the road. Obviously, right now we're not moving as much as we normally would uh, because we're sheltering in place. But, you know, we we needed something that was going to be a little bit more reliable and a little bit more towards our lifestyle. So we transitioned into a truck trailer after three years with a school bus pulling a Chrysler Town & Country minivan. So almost four years on the road, we have had so many ups and downs. There have been so many wonderful things. There have been a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through massive breakdowns with that bus. We went through uh, my brain surgery and subsequent brain surgeries and because of, a, of an infection. We're now going through the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but we've got to see so many great things in this country. We have. Our children have been able to visit so many places uh, that have influenced their school life. Um, they get to learn about history in a way that is completely different than they would have in school. And, uh, and we're absolutely loving it. This life isn't for everybody. There are certainly challenges to it. And there are certainly types of people that, that shouldn't be doing this, that wouldn't enjoy doing this. But it's definitely for us. And, and we love that it is a just a different type of lifestyle that we're doing something different and fun and crazy and that every new town is a new adventure. You get to find all these new places and we we don't really go to all the most popular places in the country. We like to go to mid-sized towns, to small towns and explore the history and the nature and and all that sort of stuff. And we're also primarily state and federal campers. You know, those are the campsites we prefer. A lot of times in the beginning, it's because having a school bus conversion can be difficult to be able to get into a private campground. That's still something a lot of schoolie owners face where they can't bring their bus to a private campground. I think a lot of that perception is starting to change, especially like in the last year or two. It's certainly a lot different than when we began as schoolie owners owners. So we have always really kind of stuck with state campgrounds, federal campgrounds, Army Corps of Engineer. We've done a lot of boondocking, things of that nature. Only now with the travel trailer have we really begun to experience a little bit more private campground camping. But that's really just because of the COVID-19 and needing to find somewhere where we can stay long term and not have to worry about having to leave. But that said, you know, this has been an incredible journey for our family. I certainly encourage anyone, uh, single couples, families that are considering this to really go back and first watch the video we did asking, you know, 10 questions about whether or not this lifestyle suits you, could be right for you. And then if you feel like it is, really go into it with eyes wide open. You know, anything and everything will happen. You are traveling with a rolling earthquake, essentially. You are going to have to fix your home on a regular basis. Your home is going to break down. You're going to have instances at campgrounds where they're not going to work out for you. You're going to struggle to find a place to stay because you want to go to this park and it's really, really popular. Well, everybody's there now. There are more and more and more people getting on the road every single month because they all know what we have known for the last four years, what other people have known long before we got out here on this road, that this is an incredible opportunity to do something and see things that we only read about in books or watch on YouTube. I want to address a question that we often get, and, and that's whether we, um, we miss family um, and if we're able to find community on the road and how our kids, you know, feel about traveling and not being close to friends and all that. And for us, and I, it's not the same for everybody. Different strokes for different folks. In Chicago, we had a lot of friends. Uh, we had no family in Chicago. 
So we had friends that were family. It, right. There's, you know, you don't have to be related to right. be family, but. But for us, our family is scattered all around the country. So we actually are able to spend more time with family mm -hmm. now that we're traveling. We can go to Kansas City where Abby's parents live and spend a month at a time there. We can go to Los Angeles where her brother and my brother live. They might not live, like that. And we but... can spend a decent amount of time. <laughs> so we, we do spend more time with family. Our kids... Um, yes, they don't have the close friends they had in Chicago, but actually all those friends have moved away as well. So we go, so see, we them. go see them and our kids are so good now at making friends instantly mm -hmm. because they meet friends in a campground. We stay at a campground for two weeks. They meet friends. Those friends move on, but lots of times they develop lifelong relationships or, you know, however long right. they, they, they last, but the kids develop online relationships. We've developed relationships with lots of new friends on the road. We've met so many great people mm -hmm. that we stay in touch with and that we meet up at new campgrounds with all the time. There are great organizations like the FMCA and the full-time families organization that really helps people connect out there. So there is community to be had on the road and we develop community in the towns that we, we visit. We've, we have met people in towns that aren't even RVers and have developed friendships with them as well. It's getting so late here at the campground. The street lights are that turning The street in. lights just came on. So we now are bathed in the glow of the campground. There's and the there's other the other one. I think that that is probably our sign that it is time to wrap this video up. So if you have any questions though about our journey to full time, please feel free to drop them down below. We'll do our best to answer. We will also link into the description a few articles we've written about what it costs for us to do the bus, some of the ways that full-time has changed us, and more. And of course, you can find us all across social media beyond just YouTube. And we do chronicle a lot of our travels every week on this show. The RV Miles Podcast, which is on YouTube and on any podcast app. Absolutely. Now, this is this is the second in a series of videos about full timing. We're going to be doing a lot more of these. So if you are interested in full timing and you want to learn more about it, we've got lots of nitty gritty how to's to talk about over the next coming weeks. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified anytime we post a new video. And until we see you, be well and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody.